with the Bitcoin ETFs in our rear view mirror, it seems that although many people are cheering, there are some very bitter coping people in the traditional finance system and in the government. But is that really what's happening? Welcome back, everyone. I feel like there's a whole lot of people that are euphoric right now. Um, for me, it's much more a matter of, okay, finally, we're done. We can just move on and just get back to our lives. Um, yeah, I do appreciate the perception of Bitcoin. I do appreciate how much more um, the traditional finance system is going to be marketing for Bitcoin. So we do appreciate that. But Nonetheless, I don't buy shares of ETFs and I don't really buy shares anymore at all. So, eh, whatever. But this clip is not about that. This clip is more about the fact that there was a lot of noise right before the ETF approval. And it would seem that specifically, right, one company, this company that I'm showing right here, this Better Markets, um, that just so happens to be somewhat loosely associated with uh, Elizabeth Warren has been very upset and very vocal about how dangerous this Bitcoin ETF could be. Anyways, this was a letter that they sent at the 11th hour, right? Like this was like maybe a day or two before the actual approval. Let's dive into it. This is a tweet from Matt Alborg, let's see. The fact that Better Markets, a special interest connected to Elizabeth Warren, who has been caught unethically coordinating softball questions to Gary Gensler, expended significant resources to put this letter together in the 11th hour makes me think we might yet get rugged. And of course, we did not. But remember, okay, you, you guys know what my, my take is on all of these things. We're watching a show. OK, like we have the perception that there's good actors, there's bad actors, there's people for there's people against. I my personal view is that just like in The Matrix, anybody can become Agent Smith. It's the same type of thing. Anybody can be a good or bad actor, <laughs> given their incentives and the position that they're in. Anyways, anyways, let's take a look at this uh, this letter. We submit this supplemental comment letter because it would be a grave, if not historic mistake, almost certainly leading to a massive investor harm if the SEC approves the pending rule changes. As discussed below, the law and policy considerations compel the commission to disapprove the rule changes while all consequential decisions are difficult. This is not a close call. The DC Circuit's decision in Grayscale Investments LLC versus the SEC should not cause the SEC to deviate from its previous well-grounded decisions disproving multiple spot Bitcoin-based ETPs from multiple exchanges. So you can see right here, Better Markets, right, is essentially pleading and saying, hey, wait a second, until we get clarity on this, this Grayscale thing, you can't you don't want to move forward, okay? You don't want to move forward with this. And, and of course, right, it's the fear-mongering. It's in the best interests of investors. Remember this, okay? Um, the only way to con people out of the best things for themselves is essentially by conning them into believing that if they don't do something for the greater good, they are making a huge mistake. This is how we end up somehow trumping individual incentives in some cases. And and again, I, I that's probably not very clear because essentially the person, once they are put, or the group of people, once they are put into that position to make that decision, they essentially are acting on what they believe is their individual incentive in order to survive. So uh, yeah, it gets very convoluted. Anyways, anyway, so you could see Better Markets, Better Markets was trying, they were trying to stop the ETF and they were trying to do it by way of using the grayscale case with the SEC. It didn't stop at the letter, okay? Here we go. This is a tweet from, Be from Better Markets. What's at stake in the upcoming SEC Gov decision on Bitcoin ETFs? Dennis Keller outlines the potential dangers for consumers, investors, and our entire financial system. That's right, guys. We need to stop Bitcoin. It's the whole financial system that's going to crumble. Keep in mind, it was the SEC that that actually leaked the um, the approval the day before. 
<laughs> so the system <laughs> we need to be protected anyways it's so funny they're such clowns all right here we go Let, let's hear what uh what's his name let's hear what dennis had to say bitcoin etf exchange traded fund and many of you are familiar with that many retail investors in the united states invest in etfs they know what they are and they have a comfort level with them the problem is the bitcoin etf is going to reflect the price of bitcoin in what's called the spot market that's where the actual trading of bitcoin supposedly takes place but what they're not going to tell you is that the spot market is full of fraud and manipulation there's tremendous volatility we're just going to stop right there. Stocks are issued by individual companies. Okay. Um, essentially, uh, companies like Goldman Sachs bring corporations public. Okay. They, they help, right. Even like JP Morgan, they essentially, uh, they essentially provide the rails for corporations to have access to liquidity in the public markets. Now, essentially what happens is, is that a portion in some cases, a portion of the company gets quote unquote, sold off to the public. Okay. And essentially Goldman Sachs or JP Morgan, or, you know, one of those companies, they act as the underwriter. Okay. Now what happens in that situation, okay, is that they create money out of thin air for themselves because they were able to assist in bringing the company public. And, and, and of course, right. I'm not getting into the whole gray area of businesses, but this right here from Dennis is completely disingenuous. Okay. It is entirely disingenuous. <clears throat> He's standing in a rigged system. <laughs> He's literally telling you that Bitcoin and the ETFs are a rigged system while he is petitioning from a rigged system. This is the hypocrisy of humanity. This is why we can't have nice things. Okay. One of the reasons we can't have nice things. Anyways. Volatility in the Bitcoin spot market, much of it appears to be due to a bunch of insiders doing a bunch of trading that causes the price to go up and down, uh, creating the appearance of a market more than the reality of a market. And that's because at the end of the day, Bitcoin, like the rest of crypto, is largely a cesspool of speculators, gamblers, predators, and fraudsters. That's so hold on a second. Predators and fraudsters. Keep in mind, never forget, never forget that the banking system is the most responsible for money laundering around the world, but specifically money laundering for terrorists and drug dealers. Okay? Let's all talk about HSBC. Let's all talk about Chartered Bank. Let's all talk about Wells Fargo, right? Yeah. Fraud. Like these people are so completely insane. And the problem is they don't realize their insanity because they're completely in denial. They, they are totally in denial of the actual system that they are in. And essentially what helps them validate all of their actions is, is well, this is the accepted legacy system. This is the accepted financial system. So they, they created this illusion in their own minds that they're just right. Why crypto is the financial product of choice for criminals around the world. Nope. That's why no, it's not. Sam Bankman free. Less than 0.3% of illicit activity goes through quote unquote crypto. I think now it's like 0.01%. So these people are just citing a whole bunch of old debunked information. Anyways, anyways, we're going to continue on because Dennis Keller is wrecked. He knows he's wrecked. He's just doing what he has to do because he's got to grind it out for that paycheck. So that's right. Have fun staying poor, Dennis. Have fun staying poor. Let's take a look. So this is actually an interesting tweet from James Seyfert. For those that missed the details yesterday in the frenzy, Gensler was the deciding vote to get the Bitcoin ETF over the line, a three, two vote. Let's take a look at this. So here we are. It's a, he retweeted a tweet from Eleanor Terrett and this is it. Turns out the SEC gov did hold a vote on the BTC spot ETFs and take a look at that. Gensler, Pierce, Ueda approved. Crenshaw, Lazaraga did not. So.
people who think that Gary is an enemy of Bitcoin. Uh, maybe he's not. Maybe he's not. Either way, either way. The bitterness and cope um, hasn't finished yet. Okay, so here we got another tweet. Uh, yeah, that's right. I had to retweet this. They are very mad this morning. Indeed, indeed. Let's uh, let's go take a look here. Let's go take a look. Oh, look at that. Diana B. Henriquez. Let's see. All right. An exchange traded fund whose price is pegged to an opaque, easily manipulated spot market. What could possibly go wrong? And so this is very interesting. Diana, Dan is obviously very educated, um, did a lot of good memorization throughout her life and, and has become probably very good at spewing that memorized information out to the public and making it seem like it's, you know, general original thought. Um, but the reality is this. Had this highly educated person taken maybe 10 minutes, they would have realized that Bitcoin is a public ledger, um, that anybody can go and take a look at it. It's not issued by any single entity. So how exactly is Bitcoin an opaque market? I just don't get it. Like th these people think that they sound like they know what they're talking about because of their credentials. We don't give a shit about your credentials. If you didn't actually do the work to figure out how Bitcoin works, nobody cares what you have to say. You're completely irrelevant. Legacy, the legacy system is going to have fun in this space. <laughs> They're about to learn the meaning of the word wrecked. And to wrap it up, okay, this was a comment yesterday after, well, just about right before the, the approvals were official. The SEC Gov's actions today has changed nothing about this worthless financial product. They're so angry at better markets. Bitcoin and crypto will still have no legitimate use. Remain the preferred product of speculators, gamblers, predators, and criminals. And continue. Well, you, you're just talking about the financial. You're just talking about the current financial system. And continue to be cesspools of fraud, manipulation, and criminality. Read more in our statement. So, look, um, the market... The market is absolutely hoping. Okay. The there are some there are some players in the traditional financial markets that are completely melting down. In some cases, it's because they weren't able to see past their bias and essentially weren't able to see Bitcoin's qualities. Now, the tinfoil hat take. So you've got this argument that's going on. You've got this debate seemingly, right? Like sounds like Elizabeth Warren didn't get what she wanted. Sounds like the government didn't get what they wanted. Sounds like some players on Wall Street didn't get what they wanted, right? Or is it? So let's back up, okay? I uh, did a few, cl uh, a few clips already on the ETFs, right? We've had no choice. Um, and for now, the model is an in cash redemption model. Okay. Now, one of the main reasons that that is preferred, and it's not preferred by the people purchasing the shares. It is not preferred by BlackRock who is issuing them. And it's also not preferred by the authorized participants. It's actually only preferred by the government, which is very interesting why somebody like Elizabeth Warren would be so against the IRS being able to raise their revenue through capital gains taxes from the Bitcoin ETF. See, because essentially uh, in cash makes it so that all of these transactions are subject to capital gains, whereas in kind, whereas you would essentially exchange your shares for Bitcoin, does not have the same tax burden. So who's, are, are, are we, you know, are, are we really... Uh, are we really seeing a genuine interaction uh, between governments, Wall Street, and and all of these kind of talking heads? Or is it just a story, right, in order for people not to pay attention to the fact that the government and the IRS are going to be very big winners in this? Anyways, guys, let me know. Let me know what you think. Put it in the comments. I don't think that I know everything. You guys know that. You guys know I don't think that. I don't think I'm right necessarily. I'm just telling you what I see. And this is the picture that's emerging. Let me know what you think. Put it in the comments. Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Help me grow the channel. And of course, right, this whole month, all of our clips have been brought to you by fellow Bitcoiner and pleb, full throttle hodl, reminding you, stay sovereign, go fuck yourself. And guess what? Bitcoin ETF shares are not like owning actual Bitcoin. <laughs>